Andrea, thanks for joining us. Thrilled to have you here. Happy to be here. So my first question is, what is the Drea Knows Best brand? In, in a sea of creators and influencers and content, how do you and your brand stand out? The Drea Knows Best brand stands out because it's a brand I've built off being my authentic self. And I know a lot of creators might say that, but I love my content because it really embodies who I am. And this is my Nigerian culture. As you can tell, I got the Nigerian fit on, you know? Yeah. And I always love to put Africa on the map. And a big part of me, because I grew up in Nigeria, I grew up in America. And my time in Nigeria was when I really learned more about the food, the, the language, the slangs and everything. And I love being able to bring light to that. And even like when my videos do go viral and lots of people get to see my content, people can relate to it regardless of where, even if they're not even African, right? Because I've had the time when I was in Dubai and I got recognized by someone because they, they watched my comedy skit of me, you know, my African mom character I play. And they're like, I can relate to that because my mom is that way. So I think the Drano's Best brand is just me being myself, amplifying my Nigerian culture and bringing joy and positivity to people um, through either sketch comedy or personality based content. Is there one sketch or one video that you look back on that was kind of like, that was my big break. What was your breakthrough moment in this digital world? My breakthrough moment was when I started my slang series. The breakthrough moment was when I got to be on the red carpet on BET teaching celebrities Nigerian slang. Gotcha. You studied a different path, right? Tell me about your, yes. your background and training. So my background is in industrial engineering. Okay. Um, my parents were very super proud that I got that degree, but also me too, because I love, from a young age, I've always loved putting things together. Mm. I've always loved just like critical thinking, having a problem and find a solution to it, right? Yeah. And that's why I decided to go that path of being an engineer. But then again, as I was in my cubicles working, I always had a, a zeal of like um, making people laugh and entertaining people, but I, and I always wanted to like, impact people on a global sense, but I couldn't do that from my cubicle. Mm. So I had to take the leap of faith and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna quit this job and go do social media full time. Where'd you, where were you working? I was working at Lowe's, shout okay. out to Lowe's. At, <laughs> um, uh, I was working there in um, Riverside, um, but at the same time, I was also doing content creation, um, doing my downtime, so I would have work-life balance, right? I knew I wanted to build my, my brand online. So on my weekends, I will sh batch, shoot a lot of content. And then throughout the week, I'll edit it during my lunch breaks. I remember sitting in the, in the lunch cafeteria, editing my videos and posting them. So that way I'm still consistent online. But the thing is, yes, I'm posting, but there's a bigger, there's a bigger purpose within me that I wanted to, to fulfill. So I had to take the leap of faith and quit my job to do social media full time. So I packed all my stuff in my Nissan and drove to LA, um, taking you know hosting classes, taking it on collaborating with other creators because LA is where all the creatives are. I was like, this is where I need to be, and was. But I have I've always been very strategic with everything I do. Right? It's like yes, you can just post videos, but strategic with the time I post, strategic with realizing who is the audience I'm trying to reach, what type of content am I trying to create. At the time when you decided to give up your, your engineering career and go full-time into social media. Were you making decent money in social media or was it like, you know what, I'm gonna burn the ships, be a starving artist, and if it works, it works, but if not, I can always go back to engineering. Like what point in the career social media were you? I love that question because again, I'm a girl of strategy, right? So when I was gonna quit my job, I have very strict Nigerian parents who um, they were very proud of me being an industrial. My daughter is that engineer. So if I wanted to quit, I had to quit in a way where I can be able to be broke and be proudly say I don't have any money. So I applied to USC for grad school for a master's in entrepreneurship and innovation, right? Yeah. So, and with, when I was applying, I actually applied for a scholarship. TikTok was giving out a scholarship for creatives who were going to get their master's mm -hmm. degree. So I got a $25,000 scholarship from TikTok to go to school. So with that money, I used that money to pay my school. And I was like, okay, I have some savings from my engineering job. Let me use that. And you know, when you're in school, like, if you're a student, why do you have no money? I'm a student. Oh, you're a student. I'm so sorry. Let me support you. Let me help you out. Let me help. So that was my, my way of being able wow. to like. It's one thing to make money on TikTok. To make money from TikTok is even a Exactly. Even a scholarship alone, yeah. too. So I used that way. And of course, I was making a little bit of money here and there, but not like any like thousands of dollars. I'm making $200 here, $400 here, $500 here. Okay. 
And then finally I was like saving it up and then racking up. But I think it was when I went to grad school that I was able to understand like, okay, being a content creator is your business, right? This is, um, it's not just like, I'm just posting for fun. If you wanna make it a career, go ham at it. Learn how to sell yourself in rooms. Learn how to network. I think the biggest reason why I'm successful today is because I'm able to walk into rooms and proudly own like, I'm not just a creator, I'm a creator who has, I'm very talented. So I know what my value is, know your value. So I walk through that, I tell people proudly, I'm a creator, I create um, sketch comedy, I create personality-based content, I'm a great host, I'm a great, I'm able to sell myself in the room. I have an audience of um, gr uh, great um, first, first generation Americans who love my content because it resonates. I know how to sell what my brand is, right? I used to go down the list. I've probably been in your DMs trying to get on Forbes, but I would go on LinkedIn and slide in different people's DMs of like, hey, I'm a creator. I have this many amount of followers. I would love to promote your product on my, um, on my platform as with a paid partnership. So doing outreach. And that's what I, those outreach I was doing in the early stages will help me be able to get my first brand deal. And then when I got my first brand deal, my first real major brand deal was with Google. Um, it was on TikTok advertising their phone, but I got that brand deal from messaging and emailing the people I saw on LinkedIn and sliding into Google's DMs on Instagram and you know, and people don't realize like, it's not gonna come to you. If you want something, you have to work hard for it, but go after it. And that's what I did in early stages. And then from there, creating quality content, people see like, oh, this content that she's creating is really, really good. Like I can actually use it to advertise on my website. Let me keep on coming back to her. So I think, that's how I really was able to start making money in my early stages on social media. I'm the first person that actually has a master's in, in social media. I think you have a master's in influence. Oh yeah, that's yeah, very yeah. cool. I'm um, speaking of making money. How do you how do you make money these days? What is what what is your revenue stream? What is your business model? My business model first is getting revenue from brands, right? So if a brand wants to promote their product, they come to me. They tell me their pitch. They tell me their their goal, and I'm able to create. Um, a storyline around the problem their product is solving. So they pay me to promote their products on my platform. And then another way I make money is my masterclass for TikTok, right? Because I became an expert. I believe in whatever you're an expert at. If you become an expert at something, then you can monetize that thing you're an expert at. And I'm an expert at making short form videos. So I created Lo Next, Next Level Influence, which is a TikTok masterclass for people to come on there and learn how to create short form videos to be successful. I'm really big on like, support the next generation of content creators. And I hate people that can keep their knowledge. If you're an expert at something, give the information out for people to be able to level up themselves. So I created the Next Level Influence Masterclass. And then of course I have consulting with brands. They don't realize how to create marketing campaigns to actually convert that can actually, people can resonate with. So I walk into these offices and I teach these companies how to you know, how to relate with millennials and Gen Z, how to create campaigns that would actually, you know, result in conversions of sales and how to like be more authentic with their storytelling online. And so consulting for brands, my masterclass, and also I have a card game coming out, okay. which is a really big thing for me because it's gonna be called, um, it's called Nonsense by Mama D. Mama D is a night, um, the African mom character I have on TikTok that she's, I think she's even more popular than I am. Um, Cause anytime I post videos about her, it goes super viral, millions of views. And she's a very like witty, um, sassy mom character that's always like making fun of people. Well, how can I monetize this character who's so popular? Mm. Let me create a product that's very authentic to my brand and will resonate with the community that I've created for this character. And it's a card game that's about clapbacks. And if you don't know what clapback is, it's basically um, like a friendly way to make fun of somebody. Mm. Because I believe in, in our cultures, especially in African culture, Mexican culture, Asian cultures, we always make fun of each other. Like your, your mom can be like, hmm, it looks like y'all, you're, you're putting on some weights. You should go out and run. Like, you know, we always tease each other in a way, but it's our way of showing love. Some cultures don't show affection by hugging. We just like tease somebody gotcha. and we know, okay, making fun of my haircut is because you like my haircut kind of thing. So the game is centered around um, bringing people together, united people together to play these games because they're on Thanksgiving, Christmas time. Everyone comes together and plays games and laugh. Don't take life too seriously. Laugh at your, yourself. So that's something I'm working on right now. And I'm super excited because I think my audience is going to 
really, really love that card game. Yeah, and very good margins for you. So it's very, that's very. Okay. Yeah. We're all about the money over here. You know what I'm saying? Hey, come on. <laughs> what, um, you mentioned you collaborate with brands, you consult with brands. Who are the, some of the, the partnerships that you're doing now or that you've, that uh, of note? I will tell the story of the best partnerships I've, best partnership I've ever got so far in my career, career and it's with Nissan to the point that they even gave me a car to advertise for them, right? What kind of car? Um, they gave me actually two different cars, a Nissan Rogue 2022 and then a Nissan Pathfinder 2023. Okay, you have two. And I got two, we're right? oh, two cars. But the backstory on that is, I know I was telling you earlier about how when I quit my engineering job to become a full-time content creator, taking that leap of faith. Mm -hmm. When I first moved to, um, my first car I ever got after I graduated college, used all my life savings on that, was a Nissan Altima. Mm -hmm. And that was the car I used to drive to hosting classes. I packed up all my stuff to move to LA. I drove to LA with that. I was driving to go to collaboration, go to events, try to build my brand. And that car really held me down during the lows of lows, right? And then fast forward, what is it? That was 20, 2018, 2022, um, Nissan comes to me and they tell me they want to work with me for a campaign. Mm -hmm. I work with them and the numbers I gave them were, the impressions were over a million views on the video I posted for them for that campaign. That was them kind of testing me out, can this girl actually sell our product? And I did a great job and they came to me for a full year partnership that they gave me a car for that. They gave me a car and also of course I got paid very well for that. And it's opened so many doors for me to know like, it's a full circle moment because what that car that I, I, I went with to like, all my life savings I used, and I took that leap of faith, and now to come around to be like, this is a brand that supports me. With Nissan, I've been able to host on the BT red carpet. Through Nissan, I've been able to be on TV hosting for one of their shows that amplifies um, emerging artists and emerging musicians. And um, I'm just very blessed to be able to have such a partnership like that because it's really big for you to just work with a brand and like, okay, brand partnership, cool, get paid. But it's different when the brand actually connects and aligns with yeah. me as a creator. That's when I'm like riding or die. Because the other day I was in, when I was in Nigeria, this girl came up to me. She was like, oh my God. I'm like thinking, oh my gosh, she's going to be like talk about my video. She's like, you're the Nissan girl. <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, 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 I'm the Nissan girl. Yes, that's me. I'm the Nissan girl. So it's, it's, it's amazing. It's good. You use life savings. That's by one car. It turned into three cars. That's good. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> What do you, you know, you mentioned you, you have all these characters and different types of, 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 of posts and skits. How do you decide, um, like, oh, this week I'm going to do this person. This week I'm going to do this theme. Like, is it, you know, I know you're very analytical and you study everything. Yeah. Is it, do you have like a schedule and system or is it more gut? Like, oh, it feels like it should be this character today. I'm going to do this, this kind of thing. How do you decide, plan out your weekly, monthly, yearly content? How I plan out my content is based off one, the, the yearly cal calendar. So if like, for example, Thanksgiving is coming around, I know they love those clapbacks I do with my Mama D character. Or if um, for the week, I try to batch shoot content. So, and again, one thing that has, and I'm, I really advise a lot of creators is try to see how you can stand out within what you're doing, right? I live in Los Angeles and I know I have access to studio sets. So I would make my friend and I, James Henry who would make investments into booking studios, right, that have, you know, maybe a hospital room set, a jail set, a courtroom set, book the studios to make my content stand out. And what we'll do, we will batch, we'll rent the studio out for however thousands of dollars it is and batch shoot a lot of content, mm. right? And spread that out throughout um, the week slash the month to post. So with those content, they were shooting the studios because I have content like when people see me post in the airplane, they're like, what are you doing in the airplane? How did you get access to the airplane? We invested money into that, into your content. If you invest in your business, your business will scale. Um, so we have those, I have those strong videos, those sketch comedy strong videos that I know my audience resonates with. Then I have videos that come up in the moment, right? Like if I'm chilling and maybe you mean you're talking and something funny happens, I'm like, whoa, that was funny. Let's reenact that. And I'll film it and I'll post it. Sometimes the videos that you don't over script and you don't over plan works better, mm -hmm. at least for my audience I've noticed, because it's very important to me to know my audience. The biggest win I've gotten for myself is I know who are watching my videos. I know a lot of them are first generation Americans or, or immigrants in America or wherever they are. And I just know like, or, or some of them might be tall girls too, because I make content about being a tall girl sometimes, all right? So I know if 
things in the moment happen and I want to record it, I'll record it and post it or I'll plan out content. But I try to post at least three times a week and I mix up my videos sometimes. I know one, these kind of videos are going to hit. If I hit the streets teaching people Nigeria slangs, I know that's going to be a viral video. But I don't give that all the time because I don't want to overplay it, right? Yeah. Tease them a little bit. So in between, I, I call it like um, my hero and then hub videos. My hero videos are the really strong videos that I have over planned that I know they're going to do really well. Right. And I have my hub videos who are for like my community. It can be just like a checking kind of videos like, you guys check out what I did today. This is crazy, whatever, whatever. And then they just like get to engage in my community through that type of video. So that's how I really plan on my content. That's very cool. We've been, we've been kind of talking about this the whole time, but kind of what would you be, what would be your secret of building a massive audience? Instead of building a mass audience, I think everyone should focus on building a strong community, right? Um, because I feel like you can have, I have what, over six, six million followers. You can have millions of followers, and if you don't build a community, if you don't relate with them, if you don't engage with them, if you don't know what their pains are, if you don't know what their problems are, if you don't know, if you don't feed, pour into that community, then they're not gonna pour back into you. You're gonna post and you're only gonna, gonna get 500 likes on your post. And it's like, whoa, you have 500 likes, we have a million followers, what's going on? Versus if you focus on building a strong community, even if you only have 10,000 followers and you're engaging constantly with those 10,000 followers, when you launch a product, out of that 10,000, 9,000 is gonna buy. So I think people should, if you're starting off as a content creator, if you wanna build a loyal, strong, and large following, um, figure out what type of content would you like to see, um, then study the greats and become greater. Because for me, when I was starting off, I had a lot of people I looked up to, like Lily Sig, and I would study how she created content. I'm like, yo, her content is amazing. Like, I would love to create like this. And then it's like study the grades and see what and apply some of the principles that they're doing in your content. See what works, see what doesn't work. Stick with what works and then give value, value to your audience. People always, people always come back to your page because you provided some type of value, whether you're giving educational or entertaining. Short version of it would be um, focus on what type of content you would like to see and create that. Study the greats that are doing great in your niche, in your, in your lane and try to be greater than done, and then um, focus on providing value to your audience. And then once you provide value, there's no way they're not gonna follow you. There's no way they're gonna return. People come to your page because of your content, but they're gonna stay because of who you are. And if you're being your authentic self and you're providing value to your audience, you're gonna grow. And kind of to flip it on the brand side now, the company side, what advice would you give a brand or a corporation before they, decide to partner with a specific creator? Like, what is the match? What should they look for when deciding, like, we want to go into business with this person? Look for a creator who aligns with what your, your company values are. Um, look for the creators who have been posting about your product without you telling them to do that, right? Because if you work with a creator who actually believes in your product, then they're go it's going to easily translate to when they post about it to their audience. Pick a creator, like for example, I worked with Copper Tone recently and um, I'm really big on like skincare and making sure that I age gracefully because you know, black don't crack, but you know, you gotta make sure you put the SPF on. And when it came to work with me, I was like, how can I, um, how can I create a storyline around a problem that their product is solving? And it was easy for me to create a video that was very engaging and that resonated with my audience. And even with the video I posted for that brand, People are commenting wanting part two of that video because they're like, I want to hear more of the storyline. So go for, go for creators who actually align with, you know, what your, what your, what your company's selling. Co-collaboration is very important, right? Don't just come to the creator and say like, I need you to post about my product and say how much you love it and how much, how it's great. It's not going to convert with their audience, right? As a creator for me, I know what my audience likes. I know what is going to work for them. So co-collaborate with me. Tell me what your vision is for the idea and give me the creative freedom to be the creative, right? Cause that's, that's, that's what you pay me for. You came to me because you like me, yeah, so. Who would be your dream collaborator today? One would be Oprah, because I've always admired, my dream is to have a show that's a mixture of like the Oprah show and Ellen show, like inspiration, cause I love inspiring people and I love make entertaining, right? So I'll love to sit with Oprah and just pick her brain and just like have her mentor me and like, what 
if Oprah, if you were me today, what would you do to make sure you reached the next level and the highest echelon of where I would want to reach? So dream collaborating with Oprah and also Quinta Bronson because Quinta is, she is an example of us creators that you can make it in this industry, right? For her to be able to start off as on Vine, like I started off on Vine too, just like her, and she grew her way, wrote her show, and she's like um, just making, breaking down barriers and walls in, in Hollywood. And it'll be inspiring and just so great to just work with her and collaborate with her on like an amazing project. What is your end game? What do you want your legacy to be? I've always had this vision in my mind, right? Since I'll, I'll start off with when I was 13, I wrote in my journal that my dream, my dream is to, like, God, you give us so many talents. She reveal to me what my talents are and help me use that talent to positively impact myself and impact the world. And if all that fails, then let me just be an engineer. So it's kind of reversed because I started off as an engineer and now I'm using these talents that God has given me as a personality to win online, right? And impact the global community. So I think my legacy I would like to leave behind is I always have this vision of like me on stage because I love public speaking. I love inspiring people. I love uplifting people. And I have this dream that I sell out an arena, right? Everybody comes in there to hear me speak, but people that are coming in there are probably like at the lowest of low, they're just sad, they're bummed, they're feeling defeated. And when they leave, they just feel so inspired that they can conquer anything. And that's like, it's not a legacy, but that's like a big well, dream to sell it. You can be like a, tele, a televangelist. Yeah, that's, there you go, there you go. But my legacy right now, I mean, just as of right now, is I just want to keep on breaking down barriers because again, my story is a testament to, a, it's a testament to like, if you believe that you work hard at what you're doing and you're strategic with what you do, you can make it. I'm sitting on Forbes State. You can check Forbes DM, check Forbes 30 under 30 DM, check Forbes alone DM. You're going to see lots of messages from me saying, I'm going to be on your list one day. I'm going to be there one day. And look at me today. I pray, I work hard, and I manifest. So I just want my story to inspire a lot of other females, a lot of other Africans out there who are about to give up, but they see me on this green, beautiful couch. And they're like, wow, she can do it. I can do it too. Because that's how it was for me. There's certain people I saw doing it, and I'm like, you don't have two heads. I'm like, will say, they don't have two heads. They're not better than you. You can do it. And I'm doing it. So.